Right now, a tornado update from the National Weather Service as we stare down another chance for severe storms tomorrow. Plus, filing a complaint with the FCC just a day away from the spring election, targeting a controversial ad from the state Republican Party. And the MLB season off and running as the Brewers blow out the Mets. In the home opener, we'll hear from the fans tailgating and what it means for baseball to be back. It's all coming up on this late edition of News 3 Now at 10. And thanks for joining us tonight. It was only three days ago when we had our first taste of severe weather in southern Wisconsin. But now that it's spring, it will undoubtedly happen more frequently. Tomorrow and Thursday, both first to warn alert days for another chance of storms similar to what we saw on Friday. Here's Gary Canalti now with our certified most accurate forecast. And then after the severe weather, we have the hot possibility for high winds on Wednesday. That's why we have the other alert day. Let's start out by taking a look at that alert day in a little more detail. We've had it in for the forecast for several days now. Uh, the, the highest severe weather threat is going to be south of Madison, but high winds, heavy rainfall, hail, perhaps some isolated tornadoes. Looking at the very latest computer model information, the tornado threat might be just a tad lower, and we'll have to see how that works out. But this will be from late tomorrow afternoon through uh, overnight tomorrow night. Unfortunately, if we have severe weather tomorrow night, a lot of people will have gone to bed, and that could be a complicating factor. High winds are a possibility on Wednesday. We have an alert day in for that. Uh, sustained winds 25 to 35 miles per hour, with wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour or greater. High resolution radar, you can see just uh, some scattered light showers moving through mainly southeastern Wisconsin. Those are going to wind down over the next couple of hours according to six hour future track radar. High temperatures today before the rain made it to the mid to upper 50s. Madison topped out at 56, Janesville at 55, but right now we're in the lower 40s and these temperatures will hold nearly steady overnight. Across Dane County, it's down to 43 degrees in Mount Horeb, 42 in Sun Prairie and 42 in Edgerton. Overnight, look for some scattered shower chances, low temperature dropping to 41, but later on I'll take a look at the timing of the severe weather and what we can expect and how strong the winds will be on Wednesday. Gary, thank you. The National Weather Service has confirmed nine more tornadoes from Friday's storm. That brings the total so far to 12. Five of them were EF1 storms, while five were EF0. For a list of where they touched down, just check out channel3000.com. Next tonight, the two men charged in connection with a deadly shooting on the city's west side last month have now been charged. Online court records show the alleged shooter, 30-year-old Charles Washington White, faces several charges, including first-degree intentional homicide and is being held on a million dollars bond. 30-year-old Jarvius Davis also faces multiple charges, including harboring or aiding a felon. He's in jail on a $50,000 bond. The shooting happened outside of an apartment complex on Tree Lane in broad daylight. Authorities have not yet identified the 39-year-old victim. On the eve of the spring election, spending on the high-stakes Wisconsin Supreme Court race has now topped $42 million. That's nearly triple the previous national record for a court race. The winner of tomorrow's election between Democratic-backed Janet Protasiewicz and Republican-backed Dan Kelly will determine majority control of the court. Ahead of Tuesday's election, some people are calling a political campaign text from the Dan Kelly campaign poorly timed. And a misuse of emergency alert sound. News 3 Now's Armand Rama has more. During last Friday's tornadoes and severe thunderstorms across Wisconsin, imagine you got a text message that looks and sounds like an emergency alert. Some people didn't have to imagine. I've seen through social media, plenty of folks from all over the state have reported seeing it. It was actually a political ad video from the Republican Party of Wisconsin and the Friends of Justice Daniel Kelly. We can't play the sound they used because it is so similar to the national, state, or local emergency attention signal. I'm, I'm really surprised that they tried to do an ad like this. That's the exact reason why the Democratic Party of Wisconsin filed a complaint with the FCC. Honestly, if we were to do the same thing, I would expect a complaint to be filed against us and to be held accountable uh, because this is just so outside the norm. The Republican Party of Wisconsin tells us the texts had been scheduled for days. According to FCC rules, no one is allowed to transmit or simulate an emergency signal for anything other than a national, state, or local emergency. A simulation includes sounds that mimic or are substantially similar to them, such that an average listener could reasonably mistake the sounds for an actual EAS code or attention signals. People were paying attention because they thought we need to learn something to do to keep ourselves safe. And then if what they're learning is uh, a politician is trying to get me to vote for them, uh, I, I think that, that that is likely to backfire. Political and communication expert Mike Wagner says politicians use provocative or drastic tactics all the time, but he's never seen anything like this. To 
tell voters there's something to be really scared of right now and then to say no there's actually not just vote for me that that's um, kind of a shocking strategy. Meanwhile, the executive director of the Republican Party of Wisconsin sent News 3 Now this statement. Democrats should knock off the fake outrage and stop trying to stifle free speech. It's not going to paper over Janet Protasewicz's abysmal soft on crime record. For News 3 Now, I'm Armon Rahman. Thank you, Armand. As Gary mentioned earlier, there is a chance for some severe weather for tomorrow's election. Madison's deputy clerk says traditionally the worse the weather, the lower the turnout. But he adds there are plans in place if storms do become a problem. If for whatever reason there's a situation in which a polling place would have to close because of a tornado or something like that, um, we would seek a situation in which we would go to administrative law judge to have voting uh, expanded. And a reminder, polls open at 7 a.m. and will remain open until 8 p.m. We'll have all of the local results tomorrow night. And it appears a lot of people in Madison are also taking advantage of early voting. The city clerk's office released these numbers today. 42,000 absentee ballots have been issued, with nearly 36,000 of those being returned. More than 16,000 voters have voted in person absentee. CBS News has learned the entire NYPD is on high alert ahead of former President Trump's arraignment tomorrow afternoon. That's when the indictment will be unsealed and the charges made public. Trump was cheered on by supporters as he left Florida en route to New York City for that arraignment. Trump didn't speak as he walked into Trump Tower. Up to 100 Secret Service agents will be involved as he travels downtown to Manhattan's criminal courthouse for booking. Through his arraignment tomorrow, we will have continuing coverage all day long. The protests, reaction, and the latest from court. Stay with News 3 now both on air and online. Well, the college basketball season is officially in the books. UConn beating San Diego State to win the men's national championship. It's the Huskies' fifth national title in school history. Sports director Zach Hanley is here now to break down how it all happened. Yeah, not many people thought that this year's national championship game would have UConn and San Diego State in it. Aztecs making their first appearance in the title game. Well, the Huskies have four titles to their name. And UConn dominated their way here, winning each game in the tournament by double digits. That trend continued tonight. Tristan Newton splashes home the triple. Huskies up 16 at that point. Newton is the cousin of, get this, Packers running back Aaron Jones. He was there live to see UConn cut down the Nets. 76 to 59 is your final. Uh, speaking of winning, I feel like we have to talk about the Must bracket. Must we? Did you win the bracket? You know I won the bracket. <laughs> you know I won the I bracket. I know I lost it. <laughs> we were horrible because wow. we went with Charlotte's heart on this. Her and there was nothing wrong but with going with your heart. Should we get some points because Marquette beat UConn twice this year? There's that. How many right. points did you have? I missed 35. It. Okay, we'll give, we you five, we'll give you five extra points for that. How about it that? It was fun, though. We went with it the was heart. Fun. Yeah, that means I'm ready for baseball season, man. We'll see you in sports. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Zach. Uh-oh. Bryce Terang, way back, and there she goes! The rookie Terang with his first career homer. All right, this I can get behind. It was a party in Milwaukee. The Brewers shutting out the New York Mets in their home opener. And this was all about the new guys putting on a hitting clinic to improve to three and one on the season. So if baseball is America's pastime, that makes opening day a holiday, right? Brewers fans flocked to AmFam Field today celebrating their first home game of the year. And our Andrew Banstro was there. Baseball season is officially here. The smell of the fresh cut grass, the brats on the grill, the optimism of this could be our year. There's absolutely nothing that compares. It turns the page from winter to the boys of summer. And today, a Brewers blowout gave the fans plenty to cheer about. But for them, the season didn't actually start without a Wisconsin style tailgate. It's just, you know, official mark of the season for us. We're all season ticket holders, so, uh, you know, we just look hope for a good year, make the playoffs, and make a run. Well, number one is family and tailgate. We just enjoy it. It's so much fun, and, and uh, we all like baseball, though, so that's great. But uh, it's nice to have the family always together. Baseball is America's pastime, a tradition that brings family together, that brings communities together. AmFam Field and the Brew Crew Faithful are the ultimate example of that. On one of the warmest opening days in a long time, the Brewers bats caught fire too, sparked in large part by a sellout crowd of more than 42,000 on hand. And hey, who says this can't be the Brew Crew's year? In Milwaukee, Andrew Banstrad, News 3 Now.
Andrew, thanks. It's still ahead of 10. Gary will have a closer look at the potential for more severe weather this week. But first, a pair of local filmmakers bringing their latest horror movie to the big screen. The story next. At Stanton Optical, independent eye doctors are available for eye exams whenever you need one. You should have seen me before I got mine. You're so quiet. Are you mad at me? Book your free same-day eye exam at Stanton Optical today. We went to Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison last night. I don't really get how the jackpots work. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison actually has had multiple million dollar winners. There are linked progressive slot machines at the same casino where local players increase the jackpot amount. And a standalone progressive jackpot increases when a player plays on an individual machine that isn't linked to any other machine. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison, more ways to win. Find your perfect jackpot. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. On abortion rights, do you want extremist Dan Kelly holding the gavel? Kelly wants abortion banned even in cases of rape, incest, and the health of the mother. He'll uphold the 1849 criminal abortion law that allows doctors and nurses to be jailed for performing abortions. And he'll strip women of their freedom to make their own decision on abortion. So don't give Dan Kelly a gavel with your vote. He's just too extreme. Menard stocks an endless selection of quality products at low prices, like Richmond water heaters. Brandon, where are you, man? Dale, I'm down here, man. Oh, what's up? Man, they got it all. And all at super low prices. I'm building a new addition on my house, and everything I need is right here. Nice. Come to Menards to check out our huge selection of Richmond water heaters for all types of home and commercial needs in stock today. This store is awesome. Yeah, man, I'm so proud to have them as a partner. Save big money at Menards. Hi, I'm Gary Canulti, and I'm inviting you on a holiday vacations tour. Join me as we explore classic Italy, October 7th through the 15th. Discover Tuscany's charming countryside, Venice's grand waterways, and the magnificent art of Florence. We'll also spend time in the ancient city of Rome, visiting historical landmarks such as the Colosseum and the Sistine Chapel. Visit HolidayVacations.com, keyword WISC, for more information and to watch a travel show. Or call 888-557-1020 for a free brochure. Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. We do the math, people. For $79, you get all this. That costs over $400 at Lens Crafters, over $200 at Walmart, and over $150 at America's Best. When it comes to value, Stanton Optical is the top bird. These ladies were a part of the soundtrack of my childhood. I'm having the ultimate girlfriend moment with SWV. Plus, call me cats, my MB Alec, and Julian Gantz. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back. Two local filmmakers are bringing their latest horror movie to the big screen here in Madison with a premiere set for this Friday. McKenna Alexander caught up with the minds behind the headmistress to learn about how they're staging the latest screams. If you're looking for your latest dose of healthy fear, look no further than Marcus Point Theaters, where two local filmmakers are preparing to premiere their latest film. <laughs> ever heard of the headmistress? Set in northern Wisconsin, the headmistress follows the chilling story of a debt-ridden teacher looking to sell a recently inherited inn, a task that quickly turns deadly as potential buyers begin unraveling the mysteries hidden within the property and uh, spooky hijinks and so. <laughs> Despite decades spent watching horror movies on the silver screen, or in this case, silver scream, Chris Miklas and Jay Sapiro have only recently begun producing their passion. We thought, oh, we would like to make a feature film. We can do this. So we did that um, back in 2018. And um, we thought, well, we want to do this again. So we kind of upped our game when it came to the headmistress. It's a much more cinematic film. I think we do a lot more interesting things camera-wise. I think we learned more about scaring people this time around. And so uh, we're hoping that the headmistress is a next step uh, in the evolution of our filmmaking. But the duo's goal of putting people on the edge of their seats can't happen without, well, seats. That's where Marcus Theaters come in, putting the headmistress on screens for a full week. Well, local-based um, filmmakers um, are the, at the heart of movie themselves. Um, you know, that creativity, you know, we see is very important. An importance that deserves to be seen, even if that means covering your eyes. You good with scary movies? I will find out. <laughs> 
it's a great opportunity for you know local horror fans to see a locally shot, locally produced film by local filmmakers on the big screen and with a real audience. We'll be there uh, on opening night, April uh, 7th, to meet and greet folks as they come and uh, say a few words before the movies, and we'll probably be haunting the theaters for much of the next week as well. <laughs> you know, so we hope to see you there. For News 3 Now, this is McKenna Alexander. That's pretty cool. McKenna, thank you. Well, check this out. Severe weather moved through the Northeast over the weekend. The lower Manhattan lightning struck oh, wow. One World Trade Center as high winds and heavy rains blew through that area. According to the Port Authority, rather than increasing the risk of a lightning strike in its vicinity, One World Trade Center actually protects the surrounding area due to a phenomenon known as the degree of influence. And I would have to say that Gary Canolti has a degree of influence over us. We have a tower right next yeah, to us. That's <laughs> true. That, that kind of protects us. But uh, we are looking at the potential for more thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. And unfortunately, severe weather is also a possibility. Now, today, we just had some light rain from late this afternoon into uh, tonight. And you can see the rainfall mainly uh, over the eastern two-thirds of our viewing area. A few places may have picked up around a quarter of an inch of rain in the darker green, uh, light green, less than a ten around a tenth of an inch and less than a tenth of an inch over southwestern Wisconsin. High resolution radar is taking most of the showers out of here and six hour future track radar shows not much going on overnight, which is good news, but <laughs> then watch out for tomorrow. We have a first one weather alert day in the forecast, especially for tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. High winds, hail, heavy rainfall, and isolated tornadoes. Now, just looking at the very latest computer model forecast, we may catch a break. There might be enough thunderstorm activity during the evening hours that still could be severe with high winds and hail, but that would lower the tornado threat a little bit. And then as the cold front comes through late at night, some of that moisture will already have been mo uh, moved out of the way. So that might lessen the tornado threat. But again, uh, we're keeping a close eye on the Storm Prediction Center. Has a level four moderate risk of severe thunderstorms just to our south and west a level three or enhanced risk from Madison southward, levels two and one up to the north of us. Tornado threat, highest along and just south of the Wisconsin-Illinois state line, that hatched area over Iowa and parts of Illinois, a chance for EF2 or stronger tornadoes. Friday, there was an EF4 tornado over parts of Iowa under similar circumstances. Hail, also a possibility. The hatched area, hail two inches or larger in diameter and high winds of 60 miles per hour or greater. 30% chance of that within 25 miles of a point or about the size of Dane County from Madison Madison southward. Then the severe weather threat shifts to the east on Wednesday. It's possible there could be an isolated severe thunderstorm early in the morning before everything heads off to the east. Once that happens, the severe weather threat ends, but the winds pick up. And we have a first warm weather alert day in the forecast for Wednesday for high winds that could exceed 50 miles per hour in some spots, generally in the 25 to 35 mile per hour range. Future track, you can see early uh, tomorrow morning, some showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures in the 40s, hail would be the main threat if we see any severe weather at all. We go into the afternoon. Quiet to start, but then look at the thunderstorms starting to develop to the south and west. Clusters coming through by 8 p.m. Temperatures around 50, maybe a little bit warmer down near the Illinois state line. That's where there could be a tornado threat here. More likely hail and wind farther to the north. And again, this will would work over the atmosphere enough that hopefully the last batch of storms that rolls on through would not have any tornadoes with it. But notice the temperatures warming up as we get into the overnight hours. We're in the lower 60s, but most of the thunderstorm activity sweeps through after after that and then the problem is wind we could be looking at wind gusts somewhere in the uh, 40 to 50 mile per hour range especially as we head into tomorrow afternoon so look for uh, the uh, winds to, to gradually die down the uh, rain uh, half inch to three quarters of an inch some areas might pick up uh, more than that and the uh, outlooks the long-term outlooks call for above normal temperatures but below normal precipitation as everything winds down so notice the uh, the uh, shower and thunderstorm chances through Wednesday and then other than a thunderstorm chance on Easter Sunday afternoon and that 10 day forecast very little in the way of rain and also temperatures above normal. And coming up in sports nine years old and already playing at the Masters what drives Addie Lupton on the golf course that's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. 
At Pick and Save, we want our fresh produce to meet your expectations, which is why we do up to a 27-point inspection to check for things like color and scarring. Because when it comes to fresh, higher standards mean fresher produce. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. There are so many things we take for granted. So many things. And along with them, sometimes we take the people who depend on them for their survival for granted too. The elderly, disabled, the veterans, people on limited and fixed incomes, or folks that lost jobs in sectors hardest hit during the pandemic. How can they survive with record increases in their basic cost of living? Some people just can't come back. And through no fault of their own, they're being left behind, struggling to keep their heat, water, and power on. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our heat, water, and power providers are working together to keep you safely in your home. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. Shopping for insurance? Forget about saving 15%. Switch to a West Bend policy, and we're offering a chance to save everything. Every memory, every detail. No matter if it's fire, theft, or weather. We promise to help you get everything back to how it was before. Just think of what you can save. West Bend. The worst brings out our best. Arby's. Two for seven bucks. Every day, a classic. A favorite, an Arby's legend. Two of those things for just seven bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. On abortion rights, do you want extremist Dan Kelly holding the gavel? Kelly wants abortion banned even in cases of rape, incest, and the health of the mother. He'll uphold the 1849 criminal abortion law that allows doctors and nurses to be jailed for performing abortions and he'll strip women of their freedom to make their own decision on abortion. So don't give Dan Kelly a gavel with your vote. He's just too extreme. Need life insurance? Select Quote found Jacob 40, a $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. And Select Quote found his wife Wendy, a $500,000 policy for only $17 a month. Select Quote. We shop, you save. It's the sale that took the country by storm. Denver Mattress presents the smash hit Spring into Savings with fan favorites like Sealy Comfort for me and better sleep too. And don't forget a free gift for you. Save up to 150. Just the FX toy. Get three years now interest financing. I'm chip free. Meta 365 guarantee. But don't wait. Spring into savings at Denver Mattress ends soon. When your door is always open, so is the fridge. At Pick and Save, however you shop, in-store, pickup, or delivery, you get the same great prices, deals, and rewards. That's a win-win-win. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Andy Lupton did something on Sunday only a select few get to do. Play golf at Augusta National. The nine-year-old Wanaki native qualified for the drive, chip, and putt national finals, finishing eighth, tied for eighth in her age group. Now, I caught up with her before she left for her competition to find out what drives her on the golf course. As soon as she could swing a golf club. Probably only three or four, we bought her a, just a really short putter and we took her to a little putting green around the neighborhood. Addie Lupton fell in love with the game. I love golf, it's the best sport ever. And since then, she hasn't put her clubs down. Sometimes she'll just come practice and chip and putt on the, the practice screen for two hours and I'll come get her and she'll be like, oh, I could play more. So yeah. I always uh, never have to drag her out to the golf course. She's always uh, the one dragging me out to the golf course. That drive to play. Yeah, I want to be a pro sent her to this year's Drive, Chip, and Putt National Finals. I was so excited, and I was like happy crying. At the home of the Masters, Augusta National. To be able to go to Augusta and hit a shot in competition, there's there's not a lot of people that can say they've done that, so um, to be able to do that at nine years old is a, it's a pretty big accomplishment. But the best part of playing golf for Addie Feels I could do it with my dad. is spending time with her caddy for life. 
her dad. It's fun watching her grow, not just from the, the golf aspect, but as well as just how to deal with adversity and dealing with pressure and, and really kind of putting that all that hard work she does to uh, a goal and, and achieving those goals. It's just really neat to see as a parent. The best part about home openers for Craig Council? Well, he got to sip school. The Brewers manager said they always bring him back to his childhood days at County Stadium. And he actually encouraged as many parents as possible to let their kids skip school this afternoon. Now, if they did, it was a good one to go see. Fourth inning, Brewers up 1-0 on the Mets. And Brian Anderson sends a two-run shot to dead center to make it 3-0 Milwaukee. Fifth inning, though, was one to remember for Bryce Terang. First opening day as a member of the crew, and his first home run is a grand slam. Brewers blank the Mets 10-0. Jordan Reed has more from Ann Van Field. Talk about an incredible moment for Bryce Terang. The rookie's first career home run ends up being a grand slam, and that at bat actually puts him into elite crew company. He becomes just the fourth player to have a grand slam be their first career home run, and he's just the first since 2011. His shoulder injury. Uh oh, Bryce Terang. Just remember hitting home and just excited that, you know, our lead grew and uh, our chances of winning went up and uh, just trying to produce for the team. You know, you don't feel, you don't remember it. You feel like you're walking on air. You have no idea where the ball went. You know, you go a little blank there and you, and you try to soak it in. Um, but I'm not sure you do because uh, it's, it's pretty special. So first homer, grand slam, opening day. Um, that's a lot that's a lot to check off on one swing as for fastball Freddie it was lights out in his first home opener start he threw six shutout innings while fanning seven reporting from American Family Field Jordan Reed News 3 Sports the Mike Hastings era is officially underway on the ice for the Badger men's hockey program Wisconsin introduced Hastings this afternoon and he made it clear he's thankful for his time and all the success he's had at Minnesota State but now he's focused on building this program back up. I've talked about history. It's important you understand it. It's what's helped us get here as a family. Um, so very appreciative and understand that uh, that's going to be a chapter that will never be erased. It's one that I'm very prideful. But it's also one that, that is history. And as we ask our players to do every day, you know, turn the page and we've got to go and write a new chapter. And that's what we hope to do here. We're back after this. Soon you'll head to the polls to decide the balance of the Supreme Court. The choice is clear. An extremist or a common sense judge Judge Janet Protasewicz. She'll protect our rights and our freedoms. She'll be fair, impartial, and independent. Judge Janet Protasewicz believes in women's freedom to make their own decisions when it comes to abortion. I'm Judge Janet Protasewicz, and I'm asking for your vote by April 4th. I had a lot of bad days with gout, but that one took the wedding cake. Even with medicine, my uric acid was still too high to stop painful gout buildup. Then a gout specialist told me about Cristexa. Cristexa is a prescription medicine for adults with gout whose symptoms are not controlled by other gout medicines. I learned Cristexa quickly starts working to break down gout buildup. Cristexa is an infused medicine. Serious life-threatening allergic reactions can occur while taking Cristexa. Tell your doctor right away if you have symptoms such as shortness of breath, trouble breathing, dizziness, itching, or swelling of the throat or tongue. Cristexa is not recommended if you have high levels of uric acid without a history of gout. Do not take Cristexa if you have a rare disorder called G6PD deficiency or favism. Before receiving Cristexa, tell your doctor if you have a history of heart problems in all the medicines you take. Cristexa may cause gout flare-ups, allergic reactions, nausea, bruising, sore throat, constipation, chest pain, and vomiting. I received Cristexa for about six months. Now I'm in control, not gout. Find a doctor who specializes in gout at goutdocnow.com. The local water experts at Culligan can take care of everything but the kitchen sink. Actually, we do that too. Culligan, here for every water worry. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors for 35 years. Call today for free information. 
Call 800-550-5543. A teenager with the mental capacity of a six-year-old, tricked by a predator on Facebook using a fake name, who then sexually assaulted her. It was pure evil. If Judge Janet Protasewicz was to ever take a stand for a victim, this was the time and this was the victim. But she failed again, placing the man on probation with a measly 60 days in the local jail. Tell Janet Protasewicz, stop letting predators off easy. Call for action only on News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Gary's back with the final check of the forecast. Yeah, showers that we've had out there for this evening are moving off to the east. I think most of those will be over with overnight. Uh, you can see six-hour future track radar pretty much taking them out of southern Wisconsin. Current temperatures on the cool side, and we'll start out cool tomorrow with temperatures in the lower 40s here in Dane County right now. Uh, 42 right now in Edgerton, 42 Verona, 42 in Belleville. Look for temperatures to climb into the upper 40s by late afternoon. Showers and thunderstorms could be some severe weather tomorrow afternoon, but that high of 59 just before midnight in the the better chances for severe thunderstorms will be overnight tomorrow night. High winds, hail, heavy rainfall, and perhaps even isolated tornadoes through early Wednesday morning. And then another first worn weather alert day for Wednesday for winds that could gust to 50 miles per hour or greater. After that, things settled out, <laughs> which we could use. Mm -hmm. Kelly Slifka will update you in the morning. All right, Terry, sounds good. Thank you. Thanks for staying up late with us, folks. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.